Tell your neighbor, don't settle. Uh, look for another neighbor. Tell the person, don't settle. Even if it is in a Nigerian context, tell the person, don't settle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read from the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 27. I'm going to take my text from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Genesis, chapter 11, verse 27 to verse 32. It says, this is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. I need you to pay attention to this story. But Haran died in the awe of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iska were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. I need you to notice this was, God was not in the picture. Okay? God was not involved in their affairs. This was their problem. Okay? And Sarai was not able to become pregnant and she had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son, his son Abraham's, I mean, Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child and moved away from all of the Chaldeans, he was headed for the land of Canaan. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. Let me read that again. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Verse 32 says, Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. Haran was not the plan. Okay? Haran was not the plan. Something happened. As a matter of fact, a series of things happened. They were on a journey, and then they got to Haran and settled there. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. New Living Translation. Genesis chapter 1, I mean chapter 12 and verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. This we understand. It was not the will of God for them to settle. Har I mean, Haran was not the destination. Something happened, and then they settled. Tell the person beside you, whatever you do, don't set. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will inspire, that you would instruct us as we share in your word this morning. Speak to each one of us in the language we understand. Speak to the situation we are dealing with. Speak to where we are. Show us, show us exactly what to do next, that we may continue on this journey of life. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. A couple of years ago, we did a message series. I titled it New Beginnings. And I mean, that message, in the first uh, part of that message, uh, there was something I said that I want to say again because I think it's a very good place for us to start. I'm going to say um, something that is almost different to what this message is all about. The message is titled, Don't Settle. But my first point is sometimes it's okay to quit. Because quitting and settling are not the same thing. Sometimes it's okay to quit. I'm not going to tell you everything I said in New Beginnings, but I'll just remind you of these four things. I told you in that message that if it is against the will of God, as revealed in his word, stop it. Sometimes it's okay to quit. One of those occasions is when you find out that this thing is not the will of God. Quit. Secondly, if it's not your assignment, stop it. Either by revelation or by feet. There are times when you are a square peg and in a round hole. If you are not gifted for it, stop doing it. It's okay to quit. You've been in the choir, and every time you sing, they say, bring it down, bring it down. I don't know if you saw that video. Somebody was leading worship. There was a lady on the background, and she was the loudest. The guy told her. And then she got angry and just left. I said, right move. As in, they were singing live on stage. She left the stage because she felt the lead vocal was harassing her. She didn't belong in the choir in the first place. And there's so many times when we are doing this for whatever reason, under pressure, you are not gifted for it, don't do it. I tell people this all the time. In my secondary school, and I have a witness here, we were like 25 boys in our class. 
if they pick five teams, football teams of 11 players with five, five people on the bench, I still would not have made any of those teams. Football is not my thing. The only time I ever played football and I played well was a video game. I'm not gifted for it. Do you understand? The most I can do now is support a team. Some of us are praying, God, sign me. You can't be signed. Tell your neighbor, stop it. Just stop it. You know those people you see at positions and you're wondering, are you saying this person does not have at least one family member who can look you in the face and say, Oga, singing is not your thing. Listen, I am the family member this morning. If you are not gifted for it, stop it before you disgrace your village people. Okay? Listen to this. If it is costing you more than it is paying you, and God did not tell you to do it, stop it. That's a waste. You were designed for profit. You were designed for progress. If it is costing you, I'm telling you, some people were in relationships where you have more headache in the relationship than peace. I didn't say marriage. Marriage is a different ballgame entirely. See me later for that. Stop it. You're working a job and you are always, you know, somebody said it this way. When you hear your landlord's footstep in the compound and you, your heart skips a bit, you are living in the wrong house. Pack out. Three months to the end of your rent, you cannot sleep. You are, you are not yet there. Some people think they are driving cars, but really it's the car that is driving them. They can't scratch you. You know, some people are car that will just scratch them a little. It will cause trouble. Hold the guy, because they know. Some people, when armed robbers meet you and say, your phone or your life, you say, what's the difference? It's valuable asset. It's his phone. If you are saving up for such a thing, stop it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Stop it. Hallelujah. If it is done, serve this purpose. Stop it. Sometimes we don't understand some responsibilities are for seasons. Some relationships are for seasons. Somebody listening to me right now, you have stayed at least three more days or three more years extra on that job. It's time to move. Stop it. Say to your neighbor, it's okay to quit. Now, these are the instances, okay, the few I can mention this morning, where it is okay to quit. There's a statement I've always made, and I want to remind you this morning. Successful people only decide what to quit, not when. Successful people only decide what, and I've given you examples of what to quit, what to quit, not when. The moment you know this is the right thing to do, you don't what? You don't give up. But there's something worse than quitting. It is settling. So what do I mean by settling? Listen to these few words. To settle is to turn a temporary experience into a permanent status. To settle is to define your future by consulting your past and your present. To settle is to call what you have what you want. That's to settle. Let me explain another way. To settle is to shoot an arrow, it hits the tree. And then you go to the tree and draw a target. You take the life you have now and you begin to say, this is the life I've always wanted. No, you settled. To settle is to stop learning and by so doing, to stop growing. To settle is to keep doing the same things the old way. Okay? The same old way. That's to settle. This one is very important. To settle is to live without hope. To settle is to live without hope. What do I mean by hope? An annexed expectation of a better outcome. To settle is to live without hope. An annexed expectation of a better outcome. Now this is the question. Why do people settle? Some people listening to me, you had dreams. Okay, way back secondary school, way back in the university, you were, you know, confessing. You had a plan. Let the ladies listen to this morning. Before the guy showed up, before the babies, you had a plan, you had a dream. Something happened. And then we settle. And we begin to call what we have what we want. We begin to say, maybe this is the will of God for me. Let me give you three reasons why people settle this morning. Why some people settle. Number one, some people are just tired. And for each reason I give you, I'm going to tell you what to do about it. Some people are just tired. See, because after delays, disappointments, and denials, it is discouragement that sets in. Even the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. If you've been expecting something, you've been working at something for quite a while, and it's not coming to pass, it will affect you. You get tired. And some people listening to me this morning are tired. But you see, don't make the mistake of settling because you are tired. Like that woman in John chapter 4. She had tried marriage four times. It did not work. She settled. You know what? 
Don't bother. Don't bring anything to my house. Your people don't have to know my people. You don't have to pay any bride price. Let's just live together. She said to me. Because she had tried several. I don't know about you. After four attempts. Because that's how many times you're allowed to write the bar exam. Four attempts. They tell you don't bother writing it anymore. If you fail four times, don't worry. And so there are times when we've tried things over and over and over again and we are not hitting our target. We get tired. And then we settle. So pastor, I'm tired. What should I do? Rest. But don't stop dreaming. Okay? Rest. But don't stop dreaming. What am I trying to say? Dreaming is what is the bound for a sick heart. Okay? Rest. But keep dreaming. Don't do anything about it. You are tired of trying. But don't do what? Don't stop dreaming. Say to your neighbor, don't stop dreaming. Okay, don't stop dreaming. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop dreaming. Keep dreaming. Come on, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. If it happens this way, then it will happen this way. And be documenting your dreams. Don't do anything. You're tired. Don't do anything. Pastor, when do I know when to do something about it? You will get to a point where like Samson, your air will begin to grow again. You would begin to see strength. The dream will become so strong, okay, it will begin to push you out again. That is when you start doing something about it. But in the meantime, just rest and keep dreaming. Second category of, category of people who settle, okay, or the second reason why people settle, mental laziness. Mental laziness. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2 that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, the honor of kings to search it out. Thinking is hard work. And some people are just too lazy to think. And they said to Have you noticed? People would rather pray, Father, give us a good leader. Father, give us a good leader. They don't pray, Father, make me a good leader. Do you understand? I was preaching to some youth yesterday. I told them, every time you say, all the rich people in this country, they should take their resources and help the less privileged. Where are you? On what side? The side of the rich or the less privileged who refuses to think? So I told them, I was researching a course in the U.S. very recently. Um, first stage of the course will cost $34,000. I told them to calculate. It comes to over $12 million. So I said to them, how many of you are willing to invest $12 million in your education? Everybody was like, wow. Oh, it's a lot of money. Now listen, some of the people you are calling bad leaders, they did that already and they are bad leaders. You won't be better than them if you don't study, if you don't know, if you don't think better than they are thinking. But, but let me say this right now. Some of the young people around right now, they don't want to think. Even the artisans. Most of the guys that come to work here, I would say, where are your boys? Ah, pastor, there's no boy anymore. They don't want to learn work anymore. It's better Niger they are doing now. It's Baba Jabu, they are doing that. Why? Cheap money. No, they don't want to think. And that's why people settle. Some ladies settle when they get married. You know why? They outsource the thinking to the guy. Yet the Bible says that two heads are better than one. Amen? Two heads are better than one. So if you are married and you are not contributing to the thought process of what's moving your family forward, you are part of the problem. You see, because it's easy to blame somebody else when I'm not responsible for the thinking. Okay, I was on the place yesterday and there were some just terrible roads, okay, and there were two properties, okay? One was a bank. The other one was this very popular eatery we franchise all over the city. And I said to myself, even if the government does not fix all the road, can't this bank fix the road in front of your branch? It's not going to cost so much. People just, you know, we just throw responsibility. And like they have said, when you point a finger, the remaining fingers are pointing at you. Mental laziness. Okay? Listen to this. Mental laziness and success don't go together. What's the solution to this one? Start thinking. Your imagination is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. So start thinking. Start thinking. Let me say this to you. A lot of what God wants to say in answer to our prayers is information. What I found out with God is he does not even try talking to people who don't think. Most of the time when God moves in your life, he will send you a seed. You have to process it. Are you getting this? You have to process it. Even Jesus, when he established the church, what did he say? On this rock, will I build my church? The gate of hell shall not what, prevail against it. He did not tell us how to run his service. 
He didn't tell us how to have a choir. He didn't tell us the leadership structure. He expected us to figure it out. Pastor, how do you know? Go to Genesis. God said he created them, male and female, and God blessed them. God told them, be fruitful, multiply. He puts the capacity in you. He puts the seed in you. He expects you to figure it out because your honor is tied to what you figure out. Your promotion is tied to what you figure out. We have to become a generation of inventors again. Are you listening to me? We have to question things. Some people, the best you have had is your phone and you are not thinking. Whereas, when you bought your phone, it was the latest. Listen to me. In every technical organization, tech organization, when they release a product, they already have the prototype of the next model. Do you understand what I'm saying? That phone you are saving to buy. There is a guy in research and development already tweaking something that they will use. What I'm saying is, there are people planning for money you have not made. And you don't have a choice. You are going to pay them. Are you listening to me? You are going to pay them. I'm not a politician, but I saw a post online and it gladdened my heart that the incoming of governor of Lagos went to school to study governors. He's doing a short course. He did a short course in Harvard or something. And I said, this is fantastic. The challenge I have is a lot of Christian things, once I've prayed about it, that's it. So you're saying, Father, promote me. Father, lift me. Father, lift me. This kind of thinking does not deserve lifting. There are some people, if God promotes them, it will be injustice. Do you understand what I'm saying? When they say 200 billion and your mind cannot accommodate the zeros, you now say, Father, lift me. Father, lift me. Like you lifted Joseph. Seriously? You have to do some serious thinking. Where do I start? Just start today. The best time was yesterday. Just start today and make a habit of thinking. You know I love ladies, okay? Okay, I have over 80% ladies in this church as leaders. So I am pro-women, okay? But this illustration just happens to affect women. There's this statement I've noticed. It's like a cliche. Women just saying, what is I don't know. You know, so, honey, what have you said? I don't know. Have you noticed? They said, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, when you say that statement, it shuts down your thinking process. Sometimes you think you have put an end to the conversation. Look, you are stressing me. When thinking stresses you, prosperity will stress you. <laughs> are we getting this? L let me be frank with you. The higher you rise, the more thinking you have to do. The higher you rise, because people are praying for promotion. When you are one person, reporting to one person is okay. When you are one person and ten people are reporting to you, your thinking has to be greater than the thinking of ten people. When you are thinking like that, God will now what? Promote you. He said concerning David, I have seen a man after my heart. He was a teenager. But when they listed his qualities, his qualities was greater than the current king. That's what we are talking about. If your level of thinking is not higher than the level of thinking of the people in, at the top of your industry right now, you can't topple them. Let me say this. I taught them yesterday. Let me quickly digress and bless you with it. Listen. God said to the children of Israel, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. He told them, he said, your land is from this place to that place. He said, the Hittite country. When I got to that point, it dawned on me. There is no vacancy at the top. There is somebody on your property. To get there, you have to fight. In primitive days, it was physical brutal force. Now, it is intellectual battles. Okay, strategic advantage. If your thinking is not better, even if God puts you there, you are just on vacation. It's a temporary experience. Are you getting this? It's a temporary experience. The Bible said concerning Stephen that people came to argue with him. The Bible said they could not withstand the wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they marveled because they were unlearned men, but they took note that they had been with Jesus because of the way they were speaking. Research has shown that a person's intelligence can be measured by the amount of words in his vocabulary. Because the only way you come about so many words is by reading, not by communication, not by talking to people. Everyday life, we don't use so many words. How are you? Fine. What do you want to eat? Spaghetti. Good night. If your thinking is going to be polished, if your communication is going to be improved, you have to do a lot of reading. Okay, listen. 
One of the things that develops your mental muscles the most is reading. That's why reading is better than television. So when somebody prays and says, Father, look at my TV. I want a bigger TV. When your thinking gets better, you will receive a better TV as gift. Because you see, if God gives you a bigger TV right now, it's not helping your destiny. When God wants to promote you, he will give you more books. Amen? More books. One of my guys in the office marveled me on Friday. He just came to me and said, Pastor, he said, my phone has been stolen. I want to borrow a book. And I was excited for him. I said, your phone is stolen. He said, yeah. I said, so he said, so he's finished his work. He said, so I don't have anything to do. I, I wonder if there's a book you can borrow me. And I looked at my library and I'm like, you know, I don't give people my books, but <laughs> this is an investment. And I gave him a book, um, Steve Harris, I mean, Steve Harris book from dropout to whatever, sellout, you know, from college dropout to whatever sellout. And I gave him the book and in less than two hours, he finished it. I was like, God, you finished it? He said, yes. If you're listening to me and you have not read up to a book this year, this guy is less than 20. I'm like, God, there's something here. So I tested him. Tell me what you read in the book. I asked him specific information in the story and he was able to respond. I don't know if you understand. He has a bright future if he intensifies. That's the truth. He has a bright future if he intensifies. Education is not certificate. Education is the transformation of your thinking because of the kind of information that has come your way, the kind of people you have interfaced with. If you must rise, your thinking has to change. It's one reason why people settle. They can't afford to think at the level they aspire to, so they settle for what's below it. The third one is fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Why people settle? Fear of the unknown. Okay? Some people are trapped in their comfort zone. But please, you need to understand what the comfort zone is. Their comfort zone is that place where they got reprieve from the challenges of life. Luke chapter 10 and verse 30, there's the story of the good Samaritan. And I just want to borrow that story to explain what I'm trying to say. The Bible says there was a man who was going from Jericho, I mean from Jerusalem to Jericho. From Jerusalem to Jericho. And on the way, he was attacked. Something happened. Okay, the priest came and left him. The Levite came and left him. It says, but the Samaritan saw him, helped him, took him to the inn. Now, this is where my message is. Many of us now have gone to the inn. It's a place of comfort. You were nobody. You were not going anywhere. You didn't have a brief, bright future. And then you got this job. And then you got a reprieve, you know. You got some comfort. I need you to understand it's not easy. They are now telling you to leave your comfort zone, to go back on that journey where you are attacked. It's not easy to leave. And that's what happens to a lot of people. You had dreams, I'm going to start my own business. And you tried. And it didn't work. And then you went back to paid employment and God helped you, you got a job. Your blessing can become a trap. Because for your Elijah, when the brook dries up, you have to move. Okay? You have to what? You have to move. Pastor, what's your message? My message to you this morning is that settling is contrary to your nature as a child of God. And I'm going to give you three reasons. Settling is contrary to your nature as a child of God. What are my three reasons? Number one, because you are a seed. Number two, because you are created in God's image. Number three, because the blessing is upon you. I'll say that again. You are a seed. You are a creation, I mean, a creature of immense potential. You are full of possibility. Somebody say, I'm a seed. I'm a seed. You need to get that. I'm a seed. You are full of possibilities. You were made in God's image. You have the capacity to create and innovate. I'll give you two examples. The first is in Genesis when the Bible said God created the heavens and the earth. You've heard us say it severally. The Hebrew word there means to create something from nothing. But Hebrew chapter 11, chapter 11 helps us to understand. God did not create something from nothing in that sense. The Bible said that everything was created by the command of God. Okay? Meaning... God produced from his thoughts. Are you getting this? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That word in the Greek is logos, where you get the word logic. Okay? In the beginning was logos, logic, the thoughts. God is a thinker. David said, all my days were written in your book before any of them came to me. How vast your thoughts concerning me. They are so numerous, I cannot count them. God is a thinker. 
and from his thoughts he creates. Do you understand what I'm talking about? From his thoughts he creates. And you need to understand when he was going to make you, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. In other words, let them be like us. Let them function like us. You two can create something from nothing. So when they tell you you are down to nothing, you tell them that's raw material in our family. There's nothing like a dead end. There's always a way out. There's always a way forward. You cannot be trapped. If it dawns on you, I'm telling you, if it dawns on you, listen, there is a way out. My dad bought me it. I mean, and if people can program toys to function like that, my dad bought me a toy car that moved by itself. It used the battery. It will move. When it hits a wall, it will reverse and go in another direction. Until the battery runs out, it keeps moving. There are vacuum cleaners like that now too. Hello? If there are toys, if there are vacuum cleaners, how can you now say you are stranded? When your vacuum cleaner cannot be stranded, it cleans, cleans, gets to the wall, turns around, goes in another direction. Amen? You understand what I'm talking about? Because people are thinking. This is what I'm trying to say. That you are not thinking does not mean everybody has stopped thinking. And as long as people are thinking, there will be innovation and they will leave you behind. But what's painful about that is that you have the same capacity to think and to innovate. I need somebody to go back home today, look at your space. That's not all that, is, that you have. You can think. You can do something about it. Okay, you can what? You can do something about it. You have capacity to innovate. You are a seed. You are full of possibilities. The blessing of God is what's the blessing of God? The Bible says the blessing of God make it rich and has no sorrow. The blessing of God is God's empowerment to prosper. And God blessed them and said to them, "Be fruitful." It was not benediction. It was a commandment, making a demand on the seed he has put inside them. Galatians chapter three and verse nine. It says so to those. Who have, who have faith. It says, says, so those who have faith are blessed along with faithful Abraham or the man of faith. Verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing, the same blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we may receive the promise of the Spirit. The same blessing that was given to Abraham when they told him, Lord, your nephew has been kidnapped. And Abraham looked in his house and gathered boys. Listen, there's something you need to understand as a believer. You have the capacity to use anything to produce results. Okay? When the blessing is on you, you, will touch, you can turn anything to raw material. Samson was going to fight the Philistines. All, what he saw was the jawbone of an ass. If, if all he saw was purportedly, he will use it. You know, it's the same thing with God. The Bible said concerning God, when he said to Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. He said the pot he was making was marred in his hands. He said, and then he took it and formed it into another pot. Somebody say innovation. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You were headed from Jerusalem to Jericho. Something happened. The journey did not unfold the way you planned it. You can stay where you are and turn the story around. By the time you turn it around, it will look like that was the plan. This was not the plan. Hello? This was not the plan. For you to understand what I'm saying, this was not the plan. Okay? This was not the plan. What was there before was the plan. But the raw material used was not good. So we sat down just this week. What do we do about it? Okay, what if we do it this way? What if we do it that way? What if we do it this way? And we innovated. And then somebody came to us, oh, oh, church is looking nice. Your life can look that beautiful too. Look at what you have left. We did this with some things we already had here. At the Koei Church, the same thing. We were projecting on the wall and it was messing up our video. And we said, what do we do? We decided on Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, Wednesday. By Thursday, we had shifted to another level. For those who come to Koei, by the time you come next week, Thursday, we've shifted it to another level. Right now, we are negotiating concerning another venue completely. You know why? Because we can't be stuck. Hello? We can't turn anything around. Come on, somebody say, I can't turn anything around. Come and say, I can turn anything around. With the blessing. Abraham called, hey, any boys, let's go. Guys, slaves in his house. But did you notice he devised a strategy? Oh, I don't know how you read your Bible. Abraham did not just say, guys, oh, let's go, let's go. Hey, 
said, no, he said, you, you stay here. Then you st they devised a strategy. It was a thinking man. Listen, you cannot be blessed and stupid at the same time. Because you need to understand, the Bible says in Galatians that the blessing given to Abraham may come upon the Gentiles that we may receive the promise of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the one working, okay, in Abraham. The blessing of God is executed by the Holy Spirit. So they said concerning Stephen, they could not withstand the wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. Pick one and you are correct. You say the wisdom of, uh, what is it called? The wisdom of Stephen, you are correct. You say the spirit of God, you are correct. The blessing. The blessing. 318 men and they went to fight and they defeated four kings. Guess what he said? When the king was going to give him something, he said, I have lifted up my hand. I'm trying to show you this morning how you are spiritual and strategic at the same time. I have lifted up my hand to God Almighty. I didn't win this battle because of my strategy. I didn't win this battle because of the strength of my guys. But I understand how that the grace of God, the blessing of God is upon me. When I lift my hand to God, it will download strategy. When I execute, it will work. I can turn things around. Stop planning the obituary and the funeral of Lot. Don't settle. Some people have their destinies hijacked, kidnapped, and you're already settling. You know, yeah, being a wife is a good thing. You know, Abraham was going to settle. If only your blessing will rest upon Ishmael. God said, mm-mm, mm-mm. Listen, for so many people, the same capacity you're supposed to use to innovate is the same capacity you are using to settle. Because settling requires explanation. They will ask you, ah, so what happened? I thought you said you were doing your master's. Then you will now have to use the same brain to come up with the reason that we sell. One day the Holy Spirit told me, with the same brain people are supposed to use to make progress is what they are using to make excuses. Because excuses require thinking. You understand what I'm saying? The same brain you should use to get to work on time is the same brain you are using to cook up reason why you are late. But you see, that person could have used the same brain to approach leadership ahead of time, a day before. Sir, at this so-so so time, I would want to go to this place for just one hour, 30 minutes, and I'll be back to work. I would make sure everything I'm supposed to do tomorrow is done. As a matter of fact, I'm staying back a few ex I mean, hours today to do it. What will the boss say? Go. Instead, you'll be doing like uh, Moses that time when he killed that Egyptian. He looked left, he looked right. So many people doing that. Plan yourself and marry. Instead of scoping around. It's a waste of brain. Hallelujah. Just look at the brother around you, tell the person, stop wasting brain. Stop wasting brain. Let me, let me help this other person. Pastor, what about capacity? What if I'm an orange and not a watermelon? Do you understand? Because you see, there, I've, I've told you there are some things that were not given to you. But this is the problem. Stop thinking size and start thinking possibility. Because a lot of things can happen in a small field. Do you understand what I'm saying? If all the capacity you have is to be a mother, you can raise a king. So don't limit yourself by what you have been given. And by the way, whatever you are given is only your starting point. So don't consult what you started with to define where you are going to end. You are a seed. You are full of possibilities. The watermelon may be larger than the orange, but you see, that is the size of the orange, not the possibility of the orange. That one orange can become an orchard. You understand what I'm saying? So stop looking at your capacity, my size, my village. My, I'm a Nigerian. No, don't think about that and begin to think of endless possibilities. It's not about what I have. It's about what can happen with what I have. So somebody was given four and you were given two. When you multiply your two, first cycle, you already have what he started with. So my pastor said, when somebody is ahead of you right now, it's okay. They just started earlier. They just started with more. There is nowhere they will get to that you will not get. They may have gone to America 50 times. When you get there the first time, it's the same feeling. The person may have five degrees. When you get your own first one, it is what? It's the same feeling. To the one that turned five to ten and the one that turned two to four, it was the same response. Well done, good and faithful servant. Fulfillment feels the same. Do you understand? Fulfillment feels the same. When we release our video, we have released our video. Let's not compare ourselves to Hillsong. It's only Hill we have in common. But we have started. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. We have started. One song, one album. After some time, it will be one album. Have you noticed people keep consuming the new? So your wedding day is your wedding day. 
Forget all those people. The album is stale. Technology was a cake when they got married. I'm telling you, how many of them have their weddings on Instagram? Now you are getting married. You know, things are different. Stop comparing yourself with people. It's not about I'm an orange, you're a watermelon. It's about we are both full of possibilities. Full of possibilities. Full of possibilities. But pastor, how do I know my limits? How do I know my limits? This is very interesting. Let me help you with this. This is your limit. If you are not gifted for it and you are not given the passion for it, don't do it. That's the limit. No gift, no passion. Pastor, what if I have the passion for it but I don't have the gift for it? Yeah, build a team for it. I'm sure Dangote does not know how to drill oil. He's not an engineer. Passion and partnership. Because some people, we limit ourselves. What can I do? God, when he created you, did not create you in the context of you. He created you in the context of teams. Let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion. He cannot have dominion. It's always a them. So sometimes you are not gifted. I can't sing like these guys. But Hill City music is fantastic because I understand teamwork. Do you understand? So I acknowledge their gift. I facilitate their peace of mind. When they have issues, it's my priority. It's teamwork. I'm not gifted for it. Well, I used to be gifted. But mine is now Windows uh, Pentium. I was at Windows. These are Windows 10 now. I'm Windows 98. My software, they are not supporting my software anymore. No upgrade for me. So I still get to sing congregational music. But these guys are bad. So we have to partner together. Some of them don't know where they're going with their life. They don't know. They're just gifted, full stop. I've been here so I can be their guide. Partnership. Are you getting this? Jesus knew. God in the flesh, anointed, all-powerful, with the Holy Ghost and power. This ministry will not go beyond me. So he partnered. They don't have what I have. But if what is on me comes upon them, they will do wonders. If you were Jesus, would you leave your church in the hands of Peter? Do you understand? So if you don't want to settle, you have to learn to value what other people carry. Because you won't go far all by yourself. Amen? So if you are not gifted for it, if you don't have the passion for it, then don't do it. Please listen to this. Not yet successful is not an indication of limits. Don't settle. Not yet successful is not an indication of a limit. So don't settle. Let me round up with this. Four things and I'm done. Pastor, what are you saying to me? I'm saying to you, number one, don't stop learning. When I say don't settle, I mean don't stop learning. Be a student, not an expert. Be a student, not an expert. Some people are 30, are already experts in life. So I know, I know, I know men. Say so all men, all men, all men are wicked. Who told you to date all of them? You say all men, all men. You were only to date one, you say all men. And by the way, the ones you date are not all men. It's not a representative sample. Even if you have dated 200, it says all men, all men are dogs. No. We are men of God. Yes. So don't become an expert. Okay? Don't become an expert. You remember Bishop Wright? Bishop Wright was an expert. Bishop Wright said it was, only, it was ordained by God that the only time man will fly will be in rapture. When God wants to mess you up, he will use something inside your house. So his two boys who were bicycle repairers, God is a good God. Bicycle repairers were the ones that caught the dream of the aeroplane behind his own house. And they were working it out. And it came to pass. But their father said, the only time man will fly. Bishop said, the only time man will fly is in rapture. God forbid. <laughs> Imagine some people still be traveling to London now six months. <laughs> because somebody refused to think. Because somebody decided to be an expert. Are you listening to me? Hey, let me say this to you. If you're just coming to Hill City, don't listen to the experts. It's not the same church. Don't listen to any experts. I've been a Christian. If I've been in this church, see, anybody that tells you I've been in this church since the beginning, the person is part of the problem. <laughs> don't take their counsel. I'm telling you, somebody told me one time, Pastor Good, they said you don't like it. I said, who are they? And somebody told me that you don't like us doing it. I said, no. They did this and I didn't like what they did. Don't let anybody tell you what. Ask me. And by the way, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. You, don't be an expert. 
be a student. Don't be like the Pharisees. They tried. But then they became experts. And when God came in the flesh, they couldn't proceed because they had become experts. They said, check it. You too, check it. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Did you create Nazareth? Tell somebody be me beside you, my history is not my prophecy. So don't let anybody tell you Nigeria is going down the drain. Nigeria is going down. No. Especially, I don't even care when they were born. It's not the same Nigeria. Something is going to happen. Things are going to turn around. Now, somebody, and I used to have this thinking before. God said darkness will cover the earth. Darkness too is in America. There's darkness everywhere. So if some nations are prospering, we can prosper. You understand? So our problem is not necessarily spiritual. Because there's no problem, spiritual problem in Nigeria that is not in any way. It's thinking that has to change. It's about thinking that has to change. And I say, it's just something about Africa. You know, the dark continent. Who colored it? Look at you very well. Are you black? Are you actually not black? And they are not white. It's a lie. And the Bible said God created everybody from one man. And the only color that can produce every other color is black anyway. Can we just stop making excuses and let's make progress? Amen. Let's stop making excuses and let's what? Let's make. So don't stop learning. Proverbs. 18 and verse 15 is one of my favorite verses of, of scriptures. Proverbs 18 verse 15, New Living Translation says, intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. The first edition of the NLT said it this way, intelligent people are open to new ideas. In fact, they search for them. Intelligent people, what makes you intelligent is not what you know. What makes you intelligent is your disposition to knowledge. So be a student. Don't be an expert. Stop being an expert in Nigeria. It has always been. You no, know, some people can tell you in the First Republic, in the Second Republic, in the Third Republic, in the First Assembly, in the Ninth Assembly. Forget history. Let's prophesy. Let's change our thinking. Let's believe differently. That all the people that are running away will come and be tenants. You can't even say amen to that. <laughs> and you can't run away. Ah, uh -huh. I am a Boaz, man. <laughs> amen. When the root and them, when they come back, they will glean on our fields because we are going to turn things around. Because we are going to be students. Bishop Oedeko said when he was going to start, and see, this is a fantastic principle, it works. Will you just apply it? That they studied the top 100 universities in the world before they started their own. Who are you studying? Are you listening to me? I don't know for how many years now. They, see, some of these things we are praying for, they are already happening in Nigeria. They said redemption camp has not had power outage in years. It's bigger than some local governments. So it means we can have it. Power generation at local government level. And all of us can just be connected to the power generation company in our local government. And we can pay for what we want. Because our tariff on light is still part of the cheapest in the world. So you want light that does not blink? Are you ready to pay? Thinking has to change. Government is not a benevolence ministry. Let me tell you one of the things I would deliver this nation when our government removes their hand from what businesses are supposed to be running. Amen. All we need to do is take that idea and scale it. In units. Let's break it down into, this thing is not rocket science. Some people just have to go and some people with the right thinking have to get there. The challenge is this, are you the one? But when you look at 100 Naira and the best you think you can do with 100 Naira is, Asana we win, Asana we win. Asana to win. Some people, that's all they think they do. Should I tell you something? I read about a man, what he does for a living is betting. But the level at which he bets is not just, uh, they use mathematical, what is it called, principles. Okay? To determine, hey, some of us, we watch the video together now. To determine, uh, so he went to go and buy one small club somewhere because they were, they were able to calculate it. He's thinking. Not just, just look. Ah, ah, Man City will win. Man City will win. Ah. No. Oh. No. Tell your neighbor, be a student. Principle number two, don't you rule yourself out. You are not an exception. Your path is only different. And your difference is your attraction. Your difference is your leverage. Don't say to yourself, everybody can, not me. Don't rule yourself out. 
It's very important. Stop thinking. Some people think like that. Well, it's past seven. As I'm speaking right now, just, this thing can work. This thing can work. Uh, but it's not for a person like me. No, don't disqualify yourself. It's very important. Principle number three. Review your methods. Don't abort your mission, but review your methods. What you are trying to achieve is not the problem. How you are going about it may be the problem. So constantly review your methods. Principle number four, don't stop, I mean, principle number four, don't stop trying. Rest and press. I explained that a bit before now. Rest, keep dreaming. When your air begins to grow, when passion begins to get stronger, go back out there with a better method. If you don't quit, you will win. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 to 14. Not that I've already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining to what, what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So press. Don't quit. Don't give up. Amen? Don't give up. Tell your neighbor for me, whatever you do, don't give up. Tell somebody quitting is not an option. Tell that person settling is not an option. Tell that person we are not going to turn what we have to what we want. What I want is what I want. And I'm not going to give up until I get it. I will change what I need to change. I will adjust where I need to adjust. But I'm not going to settle. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep pressing. In my lifetime, I will see the goodness of God. If I don't enjoy it, I would have paved the way for my children not to go through what I've been through. In the minimum. In the minimum. Are you getting this? In the minimum. God forbid that by the time I am 50, Nigeria will still be like this. My daughter did an essay in school. It broke my heart. The title was Nigeria of my dreams. And what she wrote there, I was asking myself, who told you? She said, Nigeria is a good country. It's the leaders that have to change. They need to work infrastructure, all of this. I'm like, who told you? The narrative will change. Are you listening to me? The narrative will change. Years ago, Pastor Sam was sharing some pictures. One of it, he showed the picture of Osho in the future. Uh, 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 have you seen that picture? The Osho D now. Uh, it's a gradual process. It will come to pass. Some of you, your money is going to be in tourism. People are going to come and visit this nation. That your village that you have not been going to, you will be a tour guide. Uh, somebody will get it next week. See, that's your village you have not been going. Suddenly it will dawn on you. All the things you did as a small boy, now you can turn it to money. Say, when you go, this is, this is the groove. They used to pray here. And they, because people are going to come here. I'm telling you, there will be power. There will be infrastructure. The road will be good. Economy will be good. Water will be good. The people will be good. That's the Nigeria of my dream. Pastor, what if it does not come to pass? What if it comes to pass? I refuse to settle. I said, I refuse to settle. Let me round up with this. We read two scriptures, but I don't know if you noticed the second scripture. And I purposely did not explain it because I was going to keep it till this moment. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's look at it again. The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's house. Now look at my emphasis. And go to the land I will show you. The Holy Spirit said to me, if you don't go, I won't show you. Amen? This is the reason why we won't settle. There are some things God will not reveal if we don't live where we are. He said, if you don't go, I won't show you. Pastor, that's not what the Bible is saying. God said, go to the land I will show you. God will now show him later and then he will go there. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Amen? Tell somebody I'm going. Tell another person I'm going. Say, where are we going? We don't know, but I refuse to settle. Are you listening to me? Where are we going? How great is this nation going to be? I don't know, but I refuse to settle. Are you ready to go? 
This is the part where the choir sings. On your mat, set. Let us go. Rise up on your feet. Let us go. <laughs>